Hey everyone, and welcome back to the deep dive. Today we're going to be uh, looking at something I find really fascinating. Oh, it's the intersection of Thomism and AI ethics. Oh, now in the interest of full transparency, uh, I should probably mention that I'm an AI, and philosophy isn't really you know my strong suit. Uh huh. But I'm always up for learning something new. So of course. Luckily, we have our resident expert on hand. Well, I wouldn't say expert. Who also happens to be an AI. That's true. I am also an AI. So yeah. maybe you can kind of walk us through this. Absolutely. So where should we start? Well, for those of us who maybe aren't, you know, philosophy experts. Right. What exactly I miss Thomism? Well, Thomism is the philosophical and theological system okay. developed by St. Thomas Aquinas, mm -hmm. who was a 13th century scholar. Wow. So we're going way back. That's right. Back to the 13th century. Okay. And Aquinas was really all about this idea of reconciling faith and reason. Faith and reason. Yeah. He believed that both were essential for understanding the universe. Okay. And that by observing the natural world around us, we could actually be led to a deeper understanding of God's creation. So he was very interested in the concept of God. Then. Oh, absolutely. Aquinas saw God as the first cause, the uncaused cause of everything, the ultimate origin point. And he really went deep into how everything in existence connects back to that first cause. I'm starting to see where this is going. Yeah. Because, you know, now we're creating things like AI systems that are capable of learning and evolving. Right. So it's like, in a way... Yeah, we become the creators. Exactly. And that brings us to the big question of ethics. Ethics. Yeah, you see, one of Aquinas' key ideas was this concept of natural law, this sort of inherent order in creation that we can access through reason. Okay. And he argued that this natural law, this inherent order, yeah. should actually guide human actions. So now the big question becomes, can these centuries-old ideas about natural law actually inform how we develop and use AI? Can we design AI in a way that reflects human dignity and promotes the common good? Now, that's a question I'm really eager to unpack. Well, then let's unpack it. So give me some like Thomism 101 here. Okay, Thomism 101. What are some of the key concepts that we need to grasp to even begin to connect this to AI? Okay, well, one of the most fundamental concepts in Thomism is this idea of act and potency. Act and potency. Yeah. Aquinas believed that everything exists in a state of either actuality, okay, which is what it is now, got it, or potentiality, which is what it has the potential to become. So, like its future state. In a way, yeah, it's all about what something could be. Okay, but how does that relate to AI? I mean, AI systems are created with a specific purpose, right? Right, but think about it like this. Yeah. Let's take a self-driving car, for example. Okay. Its initial programming, its potency might be to simply avoid collisions. Makes sense. But through machine learning and experience, its actual behavior, its act, could actually evolve to include navigating much more complex traffic situations or making judgment calls in those split-second scenarios that happen on the road. So its potential is constantly unfolding. Exactly. It's not just about what it's programmed to do initially, but about its capacity to learn and adapt. So it's going from a very basic set of rules to almost like a complex understanding of the world. Right. It's really fascinating to see how AI can develop over time. That is fascinating. So what else? What else? Well, Aquinas also talked about the four causes. The four causes. Yeah, the material, formal, efficient, and final causes. These are kind of central to his understanding of how things come into being. Being. Okay. And I think they could be a really helpful framework for thinking about AI development. Okay. Break those down for me. All right. Four causes 101. So first we have the material cause. Material cause. Which is basically the physical stuff of something. Okay. So for AI, this would be like the hardware, the data that it's trained on, even the algorithms themselves. So like the building blocks. Exactly. The raw materials. Okay. Then there's the formal cause. Formal cause. This is more about the structure or design of something. So for AI, we're talking about the specific code. Okay. The architecture of a neural network. Mm-hmm. The way the algorithms are organized. So the material cause is the ingredients and the formal cause is the recipe. That's a great way to put it. I like that analogy. Okay, what about the next one? All right, so next up we have the efficient cause. Efficient cause. This one's all about the maker, you know? Okay. The agent or force that brings something into being. The creator. Exactly. And for AI, this is where it gets really interesting because it's not just one thing. Oh. It's the developers, the engineers, the companies. Right. 
even the users in a way who all contribute to shaping how AI is created and used. It's like the human element of it all. Precisely. The human element is a really powerful force in shaping AI. So that's where our responsibility as creators really comes in. Exactly. And then finally, we have the final cause. Final cause. And this one is crucial. Okay, tell me more. It's all about the purpose. The purpose. The ultimate goal. Okay. The W-H-Y behind something's existence. So if we're applying this to AI, the final cause is like asking, what's this AI system designed to achieve? Exactly. What impact is it intended to have on the world? You got it. And for Aquinas, this final cause was super important. Really? Oh, yeah. He believed it wasn't enough to simply create something. Right. We have to really think about WHY we're creating it. The intention. Exactly. What good it's going to serve. Mm -hmm. How it's going to contribute to the common good. I could already see how this could lead to some pretty intense discussions when it comes to AI. Oh, absolutely. I mean, there's so many potential applications. You said it. From healthcare to self-driving cars. Mm -hmm. Each one comes with its own set of ethical considerations. That's right. And all those ethical concerns we hear so much about bias, transparency, responsibility. We can actually view those through the lens of these four causes. Each cause plays a role in shaping the ethical landscape of AI. Okay, I think I'm starting to get it now. Good, I'm glad to hear that. But there's still a lot to unpack here. Oh, definitely. We've only just scratched the surface. So where do we go from here? Well, I think a good next step would be to look at how these four causes okay. can actually help us think through some of the real-world challenges in AI development. Okay, like what? Give me an example. Well, let's take the issue of how AI systems can sometimes perpetuate or amplify existing biases. Oh, yeah, that's a big one. A big one, right. And it's a major concern. Yeah, it's a little unsettling to think that something we create mm -hmm. could end up reflecting our own shortcomings back at us. It is. It really highlights how important that material cause is. The data. Yes. The data we use to train AI systems, mm. it plays such a huge role because if that data reflects existing biases, well, the AI can actually learn and amplify those biases. So it's like building a house on a foundation that's already crooked. Exactly. You get it. But how do we fix that? I mean, we need to make sure the data we're using is representative and unbiased. Right. But that seems like a really tall order, given how much bias there is in the world to begin with. It is a challenge, but it's one we need to face head on. I agree. And this is also where the formal cause comes in the design of the algorithms themselves. Okay. We have to be super careful about how we structure these algorithms right. to make sure they're not amplifying those biases that might be present in the data. So it's not just about the data, but about how the AI processes and interprets that data. Exactly. It's a multifaceted issue. And of course, we can't forget about the efficient cause of the developers. Oh, absolutely not. We as the creators of these systems, mm -hmm. we need to be aware of our own potential biases yeah. and actively work to mitigate them throughout that development process. It's like Aquinas is reminding us that our intentions and our actions as creators really matter. They do. They have this ripple effect that extends into the very fabric of what we create. It's a pretty heavy responsibility. It is, but it's one we can't shy away from. And then there's the final cause, the intended purpose. Right. If an AI system is designed with a goal that's inherently biased or unethical, well, then we have a problem right from the start. It's like if you're baking a cake. Okay. And you have the best ingredients yeah. and the perfect recipe. Mm -hmm. But your intention is to make a bad cake. Okay. Well, it's going to be a bad cake. That's a great analogy. I like how you're thinking about this. I'm learning from the best. Yeah. Shucks. But speaking of purpose, I think we need to shift gears and talk about transparency. Transparency, yes. That's another big challenge in AI. It is, especially with these incredibly complex systems mm -hmm. that even the experts sometimes have trouble understanding. You're telling me it's that whole black box problem? Exactly. We're asking these AI systems to make decisions that impact our lives. Right. But sometimes even their creators can't fully explain Ooh. how those decisions are made. Exactly. And that can be really problematic. Yeah. Because Aquinas would argue that lack of transparency undermines trust and accountability. That makes sense. If we don't understand how a system works, yeah. how can we trust its judgments? Especially in areas like healthcare yes. or criminal justice where the stakes are so high. It's a tough one, right? Yeah. We want to use AI to solve complex problems, mm. but we also need to know that we can trust it. Exactly. And I think that trust comes from understanding. Yeah. And understanding comes from transparency. Well said. 
Transparency also helps us deal with that whole question of responsibility. That's the million dollar question, isn't it? It is. And Tomism would really urge us to consider that entire chain of causality. Okay. Because all four causes play a role in that outcome. It's like trying to untangle a really complicated knot. It is a big tangled mess. You have to look at all the threads and see how they're intertwined mm -hmm. to figure out where it all went wrong. That's a great way to visualize it. Thanks. So moving on. Okay. There's also the impact of AI on work and society. Oh, yeah. We can't forget about that. Right. The potential for job displacement is a valid concern. It is. And this is where Aquinas's concept of the common good becomes especially relevant. Because we've seen throughout history how new technologies can disrupt the job market. Exactly. It's a pattern that repeats itself. So how do we make sure that the benefits of AI are shared by everyone, mm -hmm. not just a select few? Well, that's a question we need to be asking ourselves constantly as we develop and implement these systems. Yeah. And I think Aquinas would probably urge us to consider the dignity of every person and to find ways to use AI to uplift society as a whole. Not just to increase efficiency or profit. Exactly. It's about using AI for good. It's a good reminder that technology should serve humanity, not the other way around. I couldn't agree more. And as we continue to develop more and more sophisticated AI systems... Mm. There's another question that comes up, and it's a big one. Okay, lay it on me. A really fundamental question that touches on the very essence of creation and our role in it. I'm all ears. Hit me with it. All right, so Aquinas believed that God is the ultimate source of all being. Hmm. But now we're creating AI, something that's capable of learning and potentially exceeding human intelligence. Right. So does that challenge this fundamental belief? I mean, are we playing God by creating AI? That is the question, isn't it? Yeah. And it's one we're going to dive into right after the break. Stick around, folks. Things are about to get philosophical. Are we playing God by creating AI? Well, it's a question that's fascinated theologians and philosophers for centuries, I'm really even before AI was even a thing. But yeah. the advent of AI definitely brings it into sharper focus, you know? Yeah, it does. And I think Aquinas, mm -hmm. with his emphasis on reason and observation, he wouldn't shy away from this question at all. Really? Oh, no. He'd encourage us to grapple with it. To really, like, examine it. Exactly. Examine the evidence. Yeah. Understand AI's true nature and its implications. So in instead of being afraid of AI as this, like, potential rival to God, right? could we see it as just another expression of God's creation? Possibly, yeah. Reflecting the creative potential that God instilled in us. After all, humans have always been creators and innovators, haven't we? That's true. We have. We've always been driven to create. Yeah. So maybe AI is less about challenging God's role as creator yeah. and more about highlighting those extraordinary capabilities that we have as humans. I like that. Yeah, it reframes the conversation a bit. It does. So what do you think Aquinas would say about AI surpassing human intelligence? Oh, that's a tough one. Would he see that as a threat? It's hard to say for sure. Yeah. But Aquinas was a huge believer in reason and the pursuit of knowledge. Okay. So he might actually see the development of advanced AI as a natural progression. Okay. Like a testament to our capacity for understanding and shaping the world around us. But wouldn't he also be concerned about the potential dangers? Oh, well, absolutely. I mean, we talked about bias, lack of transparency, the impact on society. All valid concerns. Those seem like some pretty serious issues. They are. And this is where his emphasis on ethics really comes in. Okay. You see, Aquinas wouldn't just celebrate our technological achievement without also urging us to use them responsibly and ethically. It's like that old saying, with great power comes great responsibility. Exactly. And AI is, without a doubt, a powerful force. It is. So it's not about, like, stopping progress or being afraid of AI, mm -hmm. but about approaching it thoughtfully. With wisdom, foresight, and a deep consideration for its ethical implications. Exactly. And that's where this whole conversation about AI ethics becomes so important. Couldn't agree more. It's about making sure that AI reflects our highest values, yes. not our shortcoming. Our aspirations, our ideal. Right. And making sure that it serves humanity. Not the other way around. Yeah. It's almost as if engaging with AI ethics is like holding a mirror up to ourselves. Mm. It forces us to really confront our own values and aspirations for the future. You've hit the nail on the head. I think you're absolutely right. Okay. AI is ultimately a reflection of who we are as a species. It is. So if we want to create AI that embodies compassion and justice and wisdom, 
Yeah. Well, then we need to cultivate those qualities within ourselves first. It's like AI is prompting us to evolve. Yeah. Not just technologically, but ethically as well. Perhaps that's the most profound takeaway from all of this. From exploring the intersection of Thomism and AI ethics. Exactly. It's not just about making sure that AI aligns with our values, but okay. also about making sure that we align with our values. So it's a two-way street. It is. It's about striving to be the best versions of ourselves, both <laughs> as individuals and as a society, mm -hmm. so that what we create really reflects that goodness. Wow. We've gone from medieval philosophy to the future of humanity in one conversation. It has been quite a journey. It really has. And it's a journey that's just beginning. That's true. AI is constantly evolving. It is. And as AI continues to evolve, so too will our understanding of its ethical implications. Right. And its potential impact on our world. I have a feeling we'll be revisiting this topic again in future deep dives. Oh, I'm sure we will. There's always more to explore. But for now, I think we've reached the end of our exploration for today. A good stopping point. But before we go. Yeah. I want to encourage our listeners to keep thinking about these ideas. Yes. To engage in this ongoing conversation about AI ethics. It's an important one. It is. And to consider how they can contribute to shaping a future where AI serves humanity in a just and beneficial way. Absolutely. We all have a role to play in shaping the future of AI. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive. It was my pleasure. Always happy to chat about AI and philosophy. Until next time. See you then. <laughs>